Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Bottom right hand corner. We have Wugsaw starting once again as the Teal Terran upper right hand corner. We have Jane starting as the Orange Protoss. This is from LA Land, and I gotta mention, I don't... <laughs> I do not like LA. I've got some family there. But man, yeah, it's a giant cement jungle. That's my feelings on it. Can't convince me otherwise. You know what's funny? Actually, my favorite movie is Collateral. It's an amazing movie. It's one of those movies where, uh, yeah, it's symbolic. It's genius, in my opinion. But one of the major features of that movie, Michael Mann, brilliant director. Everything he, I think every single movie he's made outside of maybe Miami Vice is just phenomenal. Uh, the Insider, it's incredible. Anyway, uh, enough about Michael Mann. He made that movie, Collateral. One of the big metaphors, basically, is that, is like kind of the fight or just nihilism in general and it's almost he talks about it as it's like a little bit of a love letter to LA but it's like LA itself is like a nihilistic metaphor in that movie which I find hilarious because is there more a nihilistic representation of a thing than LA especially with the movie industry as it's as it's laid out there because it's like you're an actor you're going out to LA to try to make it against all of the other million However many million people there are trying to be actors. To the point where, like... Yeah, it's just a... It's kind of like one of those things where... It reminds me of kind of going from being in... Actually, it reminds me of, like, a football quote recently where they were talking about... Uh, how in the NFL... Wow, jae going for a 12 Nexus, by the way. Look at that. Uh, but, yeah, there was a football quote where they were talking about how we're guys are getting cut. And they're used to they're used to being like the number one guy on their team, and so getting cut, then is like, oof, right? Big ego hit all of a sudden. When if you've, you've been like the best of the best your entire life, but it's kind of like yeah, you're one of the best two hundred in the world. But they're looking for one of the top five, in the world, you know, and it's kind of like even though it's so phenomenal, and that's like weird aspects of LA at large just because they're just a glut. Anyway, enough of that. Two gate being dropped from Jayun to follow up rather than uh, oftentimes what I see is sometimes Gateway Forge to defend, but I think he's hoping to get away with this on Allegro, by the way. One of the newer maps. That should be fun. Factory dropping towards the front. Or I, I should say newer maps in the map pool with the... Uh, Blizzard ladder reset. SCV gonna go caddy corner, so it is gonna be able to wander up and see this fast nexus. But now the question is, with that SCV that pulled off gas, how is Wug gonna respond? Are we gonna see two more SCV go on gas, or are we just going to see a quick grab from the nexus and at, or sorry, of the command center? And honestly, after game one, I'm expecting potentially just going ahead and grabbing that command center. Two zealots being produced to provide some sufficient defense pylon towards the front as well. The Marines immediately making their way out. No SCV to follow. So three Marines and a Vulture are going to come off the line. And a lot of SCVs. But it's a bit of a... Okay, so Bunker's being built. The two Zelts are right there, though. So SCV going to have to flee. They're going to go ahead and punch. That's getting canceled. Vulture making its way out. So the Vulture could deal with the Zealots. Is there a Forge? No, it's just going to be Dragoon's... And some time built. SCV killed on the front, but here come the rest of the SCV. Some of them with minerals in hand, as though they are Trojan horses. The Marines getting jumped right on top of. And that is unfortunate, because the Marines could be very, very helpful against those Dragoons. Which are just now being fielded. However, still a lot of SCVs on the front. Trying to rebuild that bunker. The forward SCV that's doing the building getting taken out. Two SCVs versus two Vultures and the Marine. The Marines really would have evened things out because they just do a rapid amount of damage. Second Dragoon keeping that bunker from being built. Wug trying to concentrate on this back grouping. A lot of these probes are getting wiped out. And actually, if all of these SCVs... Well, if all of these SCVs retreat, Wug might have done sufficient damage here. Jayun actually behind in the overall worker count all of a sudden. Although Wug's still going to be back... Still think this pays out for Jayun though, because he's going to be able to double build out of this Nexus. 
So Ugg feeling like he was able to clear that probe line. I have not seen that before. The attempt to clear the probe line and then just an immediate pullback of the SCVs to home base. And honestly, I think that might have been efficient. So Jayen with has four Dragoons out. But yeah, you see the worker count's just about even. Yeah, the command center's delayed. But honestly, not too shabby. Not too shabby, Wug. Sorry, I have been a little bit less energy in the play-by-play the -play here. It's the sore throat thing. The congestion. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit more chill today. Robotics facility. Now going to come online behind this. But one problem for Wug as a turnaround is he does need some siege tanks fairly rapidly because he, with dedicating a lot of those attack forces up to the front, as soon as that pylon wall is constructed, Jane can start getting aggressive, and there's not a lot of defense right now for Wug on his front. Looks like he is researching mines, but it's going to be a minute. And honestly, if Jane wanted to expose a building or two out on the front, oh, he's going Stargate. Are you kidding me? So he's going to go for a quick tech switch and see if he can get away with it. So this is experimental build time. Armory coming online. Engineering Bay as well to maybe potentially try to counter uh, what would have maybe been a reaver drop, but I think Jayun is going to go for that two-base arbiter or not arbiter, uh, two-base carrier tech play that we saw towards the end of ASL what was it? Season 13? 14? So we got one Stargate up, no second Stargate as of yet. Is what going to spot it is one question. And second question, is he going to be able to respond to it? Because keep in mind, game one, Wug played very, very, very economically passively. And it is possible you'll find with some, I'll argue, C-tier uh, players. And I'm not sure if Wug fits this category or not, because I just don't know where he is on the ladder. But they will just kind of have the one build order they're executing and not a lot of variety out of it. Not a lot of response like you'll have at the higher levels. And so he may not be able to sniff this out. First carrier being produced. And effectively what this does is this creates a timing for Jayun. I think it's around, gosh, going back in my brain now, around the 12 minute mark, somewhere around there, where Arbiter's gonna be pushing down the field. And if Wug doesn't have a lot of anti-air, he ends up losing essentially all of his mech and getting busted. Vultures peeling out to the left. We'll see if Wug can sniff this out though. First of all, by the lack of pressure, also by the lack of a third. Doesn't look like he's planting any mines there. Observer gonna wander up. Get pushed back just barely with two health remaining. So not gonna get a look at the factory count. But that does give indication to Wug that, oh hey, there's a observatory up. He's building that academy, but keep in mind with the positioning of this, Jayun has put all of this tech to the left-hand corner. So there's going to be two scans for Wug. And those two scans are going to be absolutely critical. Two gateways tacking on. This is to build some ground forces just in case there's some Arbiter support. Plus one air weapons also being researched. Fortunately for Wug, he is going to have plus one weapons on his end. If he can drop another factory or two, He'll be in a really good position. So here's kind of moments of truth here. Also, if you look at the supply difference, actually, Wug way behind in uh, that field as well. He has been sitting on just the two factories for a bit and actually hasn't really been producing anything out of them. Maybe a little bit confused. And I like what Jayun's doing. He's not... Well, he is. What are you, Whoa! So not only is he going carriers here, he's also going to try to take that 12 o'clock nexus. Here I thought this was going to be a fake, like, moving up and holding that. Okay, so here we go. Comps at one. Sees gateways. Sees this. Here's the big in. This will be the big tell. It's that cybernetics core spinning. If he recognizes that that cybernetics core was spinning, maybe has thoughts. Two different engineering bays. Do we see any Goliath starting to field, though? And the starport's not landing. Okay, here's the second one for Wug. Checking out the natural expansion. And unfortunately, no, he's not going to spot the carriers taking field. And I don't think he recognized the spin on that cybernetic score to recognize 
Because that, this is way too late to be Dragoon range. And he already knows that from the Vulture engagements, the Dragoons have range. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. 12 o'clock. Still more Siege Tanks and Vultures. But Wug mostly still playing kind of more of a slow defensive style. He's gone for four factories, which kind of puts you in a balanced position where you can get more aggressive, but it looks like he is dropping command center to potentially go for three. He's shooting the vultures out, wanted to catch those probes in transfer. So with the timing of that, that leads me to believe that Jayun is, yeah, he's playing this as though it was just kind of a standard third base expand with the timing of everything. And in the meantime, we got three carriers out in the field, fourth one coming on to join the fleet. And this is now scary for Wug. Wug down 40 supply. Dropped some additional comm stats, but mostly, yeah, I don't think he's... With that, I don't think he's caught it. And I don't know that he's seen the carriers. I think they must have dodged. Let's check. Yeah, nothing. No Goliaths, no anti-air being built. So Wug going to be caught very flat-footed against carriers. Jayun taking down his own forward pylon so he can start fielding troops out. Or sorry, uh, to get the... Well, messed up a little... Well, I, I think he might have managed it. Yeah, it's to get the uh, the interceptors out. Also grabbing that 3 o'clock location and leveling in with what looks like a shuttle carrier combo attack. So attacking his own pylon to get the interceptors out there. Not to clear things up. So now, carriers and interceptors making their way forward. The siege tank's fleeing. Goliath being produced. Armory under fire and some zealots being dropped to go ahead and clean things out they're going to just back up take that command center out that command center is not going to survive for long this armory going to heavily delay so fortunately this army is still there but that's going to delay some some action it looks like there's just all of Wug's troops diving forward to try to counterattack rather than deal with the carriers at home base let's see if this draws the fleet back it is drawing the carriers forward but this is a sacrifice essentially of all of the siege tanks, all of Wug's mech, just maybe to buy a little bit of time with that command center. At least that'll buy him some time to potentially get some Goliaths out to try to deal with this threat. Plus one weapons on that interceptor fleet is online, but Wug just going to call GG. You know, it's, yeah, it's over. Way behind in supply, caught off, caught flat-footed with the carriers. So Wug going to drop to the loser's bracket. Jayun going to continue to advance across the winner's bracket. Somewhat unsurprising. I'm going to say this for Wug. Uh, I'm pretty sure Wug could beat me. And he did much better against Jayun than I would have and many other players would have. So I'm going to throw that out there. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.